right. Got one verse of scripture I want us to use this evening. A little different. Genesis chapter 9, verse 6. Genesis 9 and verse 6. And our subject this evening is capital punishment. Capital punishment. Genesis 9 and verse 6. All right. Whoso sheddeth man's blood, by man shall his blood be shed. For in the image of God made he man. Now, this is a good Lord's word, not mine. It's not man's word. Our wise God taught, teaches capital punishment. If you shed somebody else's blood, then your blood's going to be shed by uh, mankind. Uh, February the 3rd, 1998, there was a, a woman in this part of Houston. Y'all might remember it. Her name was Carla Faye Tucker. She was the first woman uh, executed, put to death in the state of Texas for 135 years. Uh, previous to her, there was a lady by the name of Velma Barfield in South Carolina who was a Sunday school teacher that was put to death. Otherwise, no woman had suffered uh, the law of capital punishment. God gave the law. He knew what he was doing. Immediately after the flood, and this was, by the way, given before the commandments, the Ten Commandments were given. This command was given that if, if you kill somebody else, then you've got to go that way yourself. Uh, they are currently in court. A little while ago, I heard the news debating uh, this fellow school teacher out here, uh, A. Leaf Hastings, football coach, David Temple. They found him guilty yesterday. For the second time, they found him guilty for murdering his wife that had a seven, eight month old baby she was carrying. He shot her in the back of the head because he had him another girlfriend. They're debating, I'm not sure whether the capital, that capital punishment is a part of the debate or not, but uh, it ought to be if it's not. If you take somebody else's life, it's going to be done that way to you. That's what the Lord taught. Uh, he gave this law to the nation of Israel. He knew what he was doing. I'll say that again. But this world has said that it's not, not a deterrent to crime. I disagree. Twelve states out of our 50 states has a law forbidding capital punishment. And then they've got some other laws that where they've, they've got, even though they have capital punishment on their law book, they've got it on hold. Some states. But can you imagine the state of Illinois, as, as many murders as they have there, does not have capital punishment. Illinois and Iowa was two of the states I recall when I looked this up. But I asked the question, when they say it's not a deterrent to crime, how many people do you know that went through capital punishment that committed another murder. There's a fellow, by the way, I read up a little history when I was preparing this lesson for tonight. From the about 65 to 75, 10 year period, somewhere in that area, don't hold me to the exact year 
But there was a 10 year period that we didn't have capital punishment. They did away with it in the state of Texas. But back in the 70s, they brought it back. People that had been sentenced to, uh, that 10 year period that had been sentenced to uh, death received a, a different sentence. And there was a guy out of Waco, Texas that had murdered three women and they had him on death row. And because they changed the law during that 10 year period, they turned him loose. He killed six other women. Had they put him to death to start with, that was six people would have saved their life. Now you can say what you want to about it. Uh, but people need to fear their actions. The guy that took this gun down here in El Paso this past weekend and killed 22 people, I think was the last count that, that had died, and a whole bunch of others were, were injured and wounded. Uh, and of course, right now he faces a potential capital punishment. But I tell you, if it had been my loved ones that he had taken, that's, that's what he'd be getting. The Bible teaches it. Uh, people need to fear. Uh, the problem is man's judgment. Our courts and juries have been unfair. When I was a young man, uh, 18, 19 years old, in Nacogdoches, small town, you, we knew at that those days we knew everybody plus some. <laughs> Population then was about 8,000. Now it's 33,000. But there was a couple of boys. One of them was named Bobby Wicker. And the other one was named Bill Lantrop. The Wicker boy had been one of our playmates growing up as a boy. But he grew up with uh, Bill. Bobby and Bill. Bobby's buried about 30 steps from where my son's buried today, in the same cemetery. But Bobby's been there now since he was about 20, 21 years old. The boy he grew up with, Bill Lantrop, had an argument with him one night out there at the drive-in cafe restaurant. I wasn't there, but my buddy was sitting there by them, from Central Heights, by the way. He was sitting there. Uh, when the commotion started, Bill had come out with a pistol and it shot Bobby two or three times. And Bobby ran around, tried to get away from him, and tried to go over the fence, and he couldn't. So he came back. Bill took the gun out again. He said, Man, don't shoot me anymore. You done shot me twice. He shot him again. The guy begging for his life. And they grew up together. Then he said, throw the SOB in the back seat and I'll take him to the hospital. But I hope he dies. That was his statement on the scene. I hope he dies. Guess what? He did die. Everybody knew them. Uh, so it happened that Bill's family had a good bit more money than Bobby's. Bobby's family was like mine. They didn't have anything materially. But they tried Bill for killing Bobby. They gave him six months probation sentence for murdering his lifetime friend. He got with six months probation, that means he didn't even have to serve any time. It wasn't six months later him and his wife got in an argument she left home, went over to her sister's house. Bill goes over there, the guy that got probation, goes over with a gun, a shotgun, and mad at his wife and his sister, her sister was standing there. Instead of shooting his wife, which he intended to do, he shot his sister's leg off. He committed another crime or two after that. I know he helped 
guy murder another boy. I knew about that, but everybody knew about what happened 20 some odd years ago. A man by the name of O.J. Simpson stabbed his ex-wife and her friend to death uh, and admitted to it initially. And we saw him as he rode across California with that Bronco uh, and the news people uh, chasing him everywhere. And he, he had admitted it initially. And the whole world saw it. They saw the injustice. And I'm still sitting down, it still burned me up when the, they come back with a jerk and said not guilty. And he himself had said he'd been guilty, O.J. Simpson we're talking about. Uh, he wound up going to prison and had been released this past year, but it was over another issue. Uh, but Carl Faye Tucker, the one I mentioned in the beginning of this message, she admitted and confessed to her crime. And she had always taken the blame. The reason I know is I saw her uh, testimony of how she got saved in prison. And when they came to her and they asked her, was she going to ask any, uh, for any mercy? And she said, well, of course. But she said, I deserve to die. She said, I took somebody else's life. Her and her boyfriend, Danny Agent by name, right down here off of Watonga Street, went into the apartment at night and took a pickaxe and killed that man and woman. Her and her boyfriend together did that. And she admitted that she took uh, those blows herself. Uh, I believe the woman was truly saved. I listened to her testimony. I listened to her talk. And they made a couple of movies about her, by the way, uh, there. But she died. in the name of the law and for the sake of capital punishment. Uh, God had forgiven her because she testified to that fact. But I tell you, God's not mocked, is he? A jury may let you go, but you don't get by it with God. I always remember that. But the one I want to emphasize, men by the name of Jesus suffered capital punishment. And yet, Pilate himself, the ruler in charge, said, I see no fault, I find no fault in him. But they said crucify him, didn't they? Over and over. He was not guilty, but he died for the guilty. Guess who that was? The fellow that I shaved this morning. You and I. Why did he die? He paid this sin debt, didn't he? The wage that you and I owe, because we've all sinned, and the wages of sin is death. Jesus literally took our place, that he might bring salvation to us and bring us back to him, because man had alienated himself and eventually take us to dwell with him. Now, Carla Faye Tucker's lawyer did ask for mercy for his client. Mercy didn't come. But aren't you glad that you and I, when we ask for mercy, we're granted that mercy? I 
I don't know what y'all think about capital punishment, but they said since the, the law of capital punishment had been restored, 1,500 people have been executed, put to death. Right now, there's 624 on Texas death row. Six of those are women. But nationwide, I believe they said there's something like 2,400 or something like that had been uh, put to death since the law was reinstated. And they say now when a person receives capital punishment, only about three out of 10 will ever be put to death because of they dragging the laws out. And like this Temple guy, they found him guilty. This happened back in 98, 99. And uh, this is the second time they found him guilty. The first time there was some uh, misdeed by one of the judges or something to that effect and uh, they retried him. But can you imagine your own half carrying your baby and putting a bullet in the back of her head? That don't make sense, does it? Do you think about that a moment? But I ask the question again. I want y'all to entertain that question. How many people do y'all know that had capital punishment that killed anybody else? Well, people don't want to make a mistake, do they? But when you know and all evidence, the person said, I'm guilty that I've done it. Then, to me, that's the alternative. 